Hello friends. Welcome to the Welcome to my channel. <laughs> my name is the Queen of Wands and today we're going to be doing a reading. Um it actually is going to be for tomorrow since tomorrow is full moon on Scorpio. It's May 18th. So it's an important date and uh I just want to feel a bit the energies and what is going to be the outcome for some of you. I've been feeling a bit the energies already and I've been experiencing a headache and I've been getting a bit emotional. But I know that's affiliated with these cycles, which is going to go pass by. It's one of the symptoms that the full moon gives uh, to people, you know, giving getting closure to one cycle or ending one one chapter in your life and starting a new one and uh, the last few days i've been seeing a lot of um, on my on my cards i've been seeing a lot the um the judgment card uh personal readings even here on on screen some of the readings that i've done the judgment card and yesterday i was doing a personal reading and judgment card popped up again it's about karma it's about closure it's about ending of few cycles it's about um lessons learned you know that we're supposed to go through and then finally go through that transition and judgment card is um it's the saturn actually but we got ten of cups that's such a beautiful card the ten of cup is about union and celebration that's amazing and the judgment card one of the reasons that judgment card pop why do i see like feel like the light goes in and out anyway the judgment card that i've been seeing lately it's about upgrading to the highest level of of conscience and the highest level of love as well the spiritual love you know but this is a physical union now oh okay hope that goes fast fast so um for the judgment card that I've been seeing lately, I think it's about when, when both of you, the earthy element of you and the divine element of you combine in one, you know, look at them, they're one now, they're equal. So that's what the judgment card is about, it's number 20, it's about number two. So it's about two cycles, two cycles of 10. So two years, for some of you, two years, usually even the 2020, many unions was going to happen in 2010. And this union is going to happen in 2010. And I just, I'm saying all this because full moon in Scorpio means a lot to me. We had the eight of cups. Okay. Somebody is finally is surrendering, is letting go of the pain in order to get this victory card of the ten of cups the eight of cups actually is the moon in, in the scorpio it's interesting how this popped up this is finally is moving on moving on from holding on to the pain from holding on to the fear this card somebody is realized that that was useless or maybe because it took them a while. It took them a while. Some of you have been eight years in this journey. And I personally talked to some of you that have been over eight years, ten years. Some of you, the last eight months has been horrible. Or the last eight weeks. But uh, that's, that's a positive sign of surrendering. Of surrenderance. That means that all that pain... That you've gone through that you were holding on and it was just an ego because you know whatever happened to you yes the other parties have their fault in it but for you to hold on to the pain that means you choose to not be happy because the opportunities are out there to to choose happiness over over misery and this is saying that finally either by choice or by force because that's what judgment cards does and i keep thinking about the judgment card because i've seen it so much 
and that's what the full moon in Scorpio does. It brings union once you finally let go. It's so funny because for my personal experience, I experienced the judgment card element um, in November where the Scorpio is. And you're going to say, wow. Well, for six weeks, my the person that I you know, have affection for, my twin, um, he just cut communication with me just like that. We were not even friends, but we were the bond was there. The spiritual connection was there. So we started talking, but then suddenly he just cut me out just like that. Like I tried to to re-establish a certain connection, but it just cut me out. And so for the next six weeks till November, and, November, and I never forget, it was November 10, uh, when suddenly uh, he started communicating again. And that's when I think of Judge McCartney, and when I think, even though it's in Saturn, which is in Capricorn and Aquarius, but when I think of Saturn, when I think of Judgment Card and the full moon in Scorpio, I think of November because that's when finally that cycle was closed. I think that's when they got the wake up call and realized, I got to talk to this girl. I don't know why I'm doing this to her. I got to talk to her. So that's when he, when I least expected, he, he contacted me. I'm not going to get in details how. And then, yeah, we had other problems, but we established after something. And that was the first signal that yes it like ring a bell like wake up call like the trumpet you know hey listen to the message you know because this is something special this is some special union and he he wasn't accepting that i i recognized the connection right away but he wasn't and then and then he contacted me just like that he gave me the hint that yes i do see you i do see you but i had to really surrender that and i'm I really thought that, you know, I, I lost, I lost, and that's it. And then, um, and then I found out five days later, it wasn't, it was like almost a week. I find out that he actually had tried to contact me somewhere else. And I'm like, oh my God, he, oh, like I was crying every day for this person. And then I see on the other side, <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm looking at you. Yeah. The emperor. Yeah. That's him. The man, <laughs> the Aries. Okay. It's about the self, right? And it's so funny because surrender yourself, surrender control. That's what the full moon uh, does. Surrender power, okay? Surrender to this divine connection, he's saying. Yeah. What else do we need to know about the full moon in Scorpio? The Page of Pentacle, such a beautiful card, so pure. This is like a long-term commitment, very gentle, very fragile. It's almost as he's trying to say, I'm very vulnerable right now. So please be, be careful, be careful because there's also pages are about communication, any of the pages that you see. But this one requires some TLC, tenderness, right? It looks like he puts a slow, slow effort into this connection, but actually, no, everything is green, look, prosperous, all behind him. He did all this slowly, gently, you know, hum with a sense of humbleness. So, um, it's like this is like. Uh, uh, like a rebirth this is like a child hmm interesting this is like a new you a person reborn this emperor by surrendering <laughs> a new identity a pure heart a genuine heart without all those restrictions and the sense of ego and pride. This is what it's going to bring for the sum of you. And that's what's going to bring this union. That popped as the first card. Okay. How do they see themselves right now? Um, 
everybody really is putting the work, really, is putting a lot of work to get out of that ego place and that sense of empowerment, but then isolating themselves up there on the top of the hill in the middle of nowhere. And uh, they just they realize it's not working. It's not working hiding there. And look what we have here. We got the Queen of Cups with the Knight of Wands. Oh my God. This Queen of Cups is waiting. Aries, Emperor is an Aries, and Knight of Wands is an Aries too. She's really looking forward to being in contact with this person. She's saving this cup. She can be a mother figure, she can be, um, I don't know, a wife or a former wife. But the queen, yes, there's an element of the mother and very mature element. The knight of wands are more, it's like a free spirit. It can be also somebody that is, uh, is single or was married before, a father figure, maybe even married before, but... It can be still a father, but single. Knight of Cups, not a king. Um, it seems like he's dying to go towards her. She can be a, a Cancer, a Scorpio, or Pisces. She's very intuitive. Very, very intuitive. She sits in her throne. She's in touch with her emotions. And she f knows to the T <laughs> a man's wants and needs. She understands them and she respects them. She knows how to come across to get to their heart. She's waiting for this guy. She just sits on her throne. She got her cup and she knows she, for who she's saving that cup. That's for sure. It's for this guy here. This blonde here. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever you guys cares are. She's waiting with that cup. She knows what she wants. She's in her element. She's in her throne like a queen. She got all everything figured out for herself, you know. She knows in divine timing things will happen. That's why she's so calm. And you know, Knight of Wands are the ones that are more, more always, you know, impatient and aggressive sometimes and and also, you know, horny. <laughs> they want to, they, they're impatient. They just want to come in and, and he's moving towards her. Look at her. I think it's this guy. He's finally, you know, he said, I'm sitting in my throne here. And not much is happening by sitting in my throne. But I guess he was doing the inner work. He was going through some uh, major personal um, transformation. Spiritual transformation. Yes. Some inner pain that he had to release that he's been holding for a long time. I think that's what happened. And now it is like transformed, reborn, new cycle. Like a student. He's just learning to to, to start this journey in, in the new with a new chapter. And uh but yes, he has so much desire and passion for you. He's just he's just impatient. All this staying in the background doing nothing. Now he's like he wants to go towards you. And you you know, you're just waiting there. You're just eh, whenever you're ready, because you know what? I'm I'm sitting on my throne, but I'm not sitting around doing nothing. To be a queen, there's a lot of responsibilities. It can be mother, it can be work, it can be business, it can be taking care of yourself and your health, um, feeling strong and beautiful, and, you know, there's a lot involved to it. And, uh, yes, she knows, she looks at that cup, and almost is as if she's looking inside the cup in the water, she can re see the future. She knows divine timely, she knows precisely when... She's feeling that she, he's on the way. That's so interesting.
Oh, wow. That's a powerful one. What else can I get? Full moon. Oh my god! Look what I just saw! Ten and eight! Eighteen! And these are all water element. This is like, this is Scorpio, full moon in Scorpio. And this is water too, it's the Ten of Cups. And look at the Queen of Cups. It's all Scorpio and, and Cancer and, and Pisces. Like, it's all about the subconscious. I just, <laughs> I just realized that now. That's so beautiful. It's such a powerful number, number eight. It's about really victory, success, abundance, union. And one plus eight is nine. So it's really bring that sense of completion. Completion from one cycle. Like really. That's why karma is not always bad. It's, you know, all this pain we go through is just a cycle and it comes and goes. It upgrades, uh, upgrades us to the next level. Oh, yeah. So just embrace it because it's just a phase and it's going to go past. It's just going to help you and it's going to help them, you know, have a better understanding of the journey and healing, healing. Every year that goes by, it just gets better. It just gets better, really. It, you release with each passing year more and more and you just feel better. And when you feel better, your focus and your determination in, in every area if you're in your life, it just improves. And luck and abundance comes in. Okay? The Four of Swords. It's a bit, it's a very good card actually. It's really being grounded and in balance with your thoughts and your emotions. You know, usually sometimes it's a, it's a typical card when it comes after a painful situation like that. When you have to let go and surrender ego. You know, like it's hard for, for an emperor to hold on, to let go of their ego, um, you know, of their power. It's very hard and it's, it's an exhausting journey. You know, we've all been through. But it's good after you have surrendered and you feel like you're dying, but actually you're not dying. You're reborn. That's what's happening. Then you're in the state of the Four of Swords. That finally you find some, some sort of a balance and peace. You kind of surrender to what will be, will be. That's the feeling I get with this card. You know, it's surrender to, to the, the divine uh, intervention. Yes, 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 yes. Divine intervention, especially with all this water element here. Surrender that is beyond your control. Oh, I man, I, I I remember when I went through this. I remember I felt like dying. I swear to God, the pain was so unbearable that I felt like dying. When I went through this moon cycle, especially there was a part I of the pain that I went through was one was in around. October 2016 and one was around February 2017 and then March oh yes March by April was getting better May even better but March 2017 which was Pisces complete delusionment you know pain and I don't know it was it was horrible at least for three four months I couldn't take it but yeah four months <laughs> And, um, but then, um, I just realized, you know, I was holding on to something. I couldn't figure out what I was holding on to the pain, what I was holding on to the illusion, to the fact that somebody was hurting me so much and why they're hurting me and they don't deserve me. Yes, I was holding on to that, but it was pointless. It was, I was, I was holding on to that because they didn't deserve my love. And it's impossible to forgive. And it got so tiring and exhausting that I suddenly started to surrender, to give up, because I was getting really tired and sick, really. And that's where the four assaults happen, when you finally surrender. 
you're going to find some mental balance. And um, divine intervention, definitely. But that's where you find equilibrium, you know? Some, some um, sense of you resting and sense of rejuvenation. Because it does get exhausting. It does get really exhausting. It puts you in a place that you, you can't work, you can clean, you can wash the dishes, you can't do nothing. You're exhausted. You just want to stay in bed and, and just be miserable all day. Yeah, it does put you in that. But once you overcome it, you are completely transformed. It's going to take a few cycles, like I said, especially, like I said, with the judgment card, two years. By the third year, I feel like we're 2020. Many people are going to go through the physical union. Many, especially twin flames. Oh, this is amazing. They're going through some some um, a period of um, of resting right now because they feel exhausted. I think they went through some major um, wake up call, some epiphany, something uh, like you know, like the death card and the tower card moment, which is in Mars usually. An emperor is in Mar Aries. Mar Mars rules the Aries. So, and it's all about that aggressive intervention. And I feel this is like a divine intervention, but made them exhausted. And they're like, oh my God, can I take a break? They're like, <laughs> please give me a moment. Can I take a break? <laughs> and um, what is this bringing? What is the outcome of this? Oh my God, Ten of Pentacles. We got uh, there are two cards. Oh my God, with a Temperance card. It's funny how the Ten of Pentacles with the Ten of Cups. That means physical union. I mean physical union. This is the spiritual. This is the physical. A happy home together. Temperance. Two side of the spectrum. Body and mind, and and you know. And soul, I would say. Body and soul. And here we got the surrendering parts and the balance, the temperance. It's about compromising. It's about um, also the sense of forgiveness as well. Because it's not just compromising for the hell of it. It's about finally understanding uh, the pain and the journey and accepting it and um, and uh, realizing other people's perspective, other people's pain. You see, when they blend, they go in circles. You know, they're filling each other's cup. You never know my pain and what was in my cup until you fill your cup with what was in my cup. Let's play around experimenting but not of choice is because divine intervention put you in that place but you all both have to go through that blending that wine and water and 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 see what comes up with it this cycle was necessary to happen this pain was necessary for all this Waters to finally blend um, perfectly together. Whatever is in that cup. You fill my cup, I fill your cup. You know? By constantly feeling, there's a constant flow of filling these cups. Then you kind of, you adjust so how can you better cooperate? This is a sense of cooperation here. Cooperation, negotiation, reconciliation. That's the word I was looking for. That's why Rick Tempest card is compromising, but not, like I said, reconciliation, negotiation, 
understanding each other's perspective, each other's feelings. You see, only by blending them, by mirroring back and throwing this water and wine, mixing together, whatever comes out, and the perfect formula is created. But it takes time. It takes circles and cycles. All these colors that are created, is, it's your journey. Oh, man, this is so beautiful. This is powerful, guys. Oh. Oh, my God. This is, this is saying that this is what comes out of this. This is the outcome. What else do you want? That's what comes out of it. It's with the, that with each cycle, you guys are still together. You're blending your pros and cons of the situation or the, your diversities. Yes. Diversity. And then by blending them and then understanding them and going through each other's uh, ups and downs, you're, you're more, more understanding, more accepting, more willing to compromise because you feel what the other person have gone through uh, until you go through the same cycle yourself. You never understand why they acted in a certain way. Why they were so hurt by you and, and you never understood why these people are so fragile. Why they act so needy. Why they act like I did them wrong. I did nothing to them. They didn't understood. And you couldn't explain it to them with words, no matter how hard you tried to. They would not, they, they, they considered that you were just weak. But then suddenly you build your own strength and then karma, it put them in the same position like where you were before. They went through the same cycle like you and then they're realizing, oh my God, this is what happened, you know? It's not like she was being needy, it just, she was just too in pain and she just wanted to end the pain and she that's why she was trying to open up their heart and to communicate so we can end the pain but it was impossible there was a cycle she had to go through to heal it first then he went through that by by circumstances being created that, that there's no chance for union right away because he had to heal his own pain he tried to ignore it for a while no, I got nothing to work on. I don't believe in this spiritual things. I make my destiny and, you know, I'm the emperor. I say A is B because I say so. And then there's no reasoning to that. But uh, when this card pops up, it's, they come into our understanding. They're recognizing the existence of God. They're recognizing something divine. They're recognizing that uh, it's beyond their control. And the God, they're getting the message that God is saying that until you recognize me first, there's no God above me. There's only me. And my name is God. You know God. You got to recognize me first. Surrender to my power, God is saying. He said it to me too. Trust me. But I gave up right away. I, I surrendered. I said, yes, I do recognize you. I see you. Before you see your twin, you got to see him first. There's no way this is going to happen. But it takes two to tangle, my friend. It takes two. You cannot do this alone. You both have to be on the same page of recognition and this type of recognition. Okay? When all or everything is blended... And you're on the same wavelength. That's what's going to happen, Union. Okay? Oh, wow, whoa, 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 God. I think that's where they are right now. So if you feel your, you know, your energies are balanced, temperance cards, it's about, it's Union. It's about reconciliation. Definitely. Reconciling your differences. Understanding better each other's differences. 
and that's what's going to bring union because when you understand other by other parties perspective you are more forgiving and you will show more compassion and you're you're more willing to compromise because you see their their spectrum of the side they understand what they're going through the king of wands there you go this guy is such a big heart he's an Aries. again we got Aries here and Aries here we got mars okay mars is a powerful action-packed he's ready to rock that's what he's saying and by the way he's a rock star king of wands is known <laughs> to be a rock star he just is is usually actually is a leo because he's an artist yeah but a con artist sometimes <laughs> a con artist yeah he's a master of the disaster but um he has so much love and passion you know what he's a big heart um he's just dying to go towards this queen of cups you know she's a musician too she's an artist she loves music these people have so much uh romantic feeling for each other they understand each other she's much more intuitive for than him he's more go get her aggressive like i want it and i want it now especially with this element of an emperor the king of wands also wants the attention of him you know it's all about him and love me and hate me it doesn't matter what you do just give me what i want because they feed on on drama and who else can do that better than the queen of cups <laughs> so you know even the queen of wands is known for to be the drama queen but only when she feels like <laughs> but today because we're talking about the full moon and scorpio so it makes perfect sense to have the queen of cups here more water sign oh man that's him all right so that's that's what's gonna happen it's gonna happen this union is gonna happen there is a sense of reconciliation here somebody is finally is being more forgiven and more understanding on other people's uh, feelings and pain and uh, pers perspective yes and only by by understanding that they're more yeah the eight of cups is also about that forgiven forgiven forgivens <laughs> not holding grudges yeah don't hold grudges even it takes time even the one who have gone through the pain you know it definitely takes time but um yeah it takes time eight of pentacles is known for time number eight again eight eight you see the pattern here eight of cups with ten of cups with ten of pentacles right body and soul eight of cups with eight of pentacles body and soul have to be in complete harmony balance so you know you got to take care of yourself and center yourself there's the need for to center yourself but i feel that's the path we are right now that's the path even this person whoever is in this state is right now eight is a, a powerful number of um success and um and infinity yes this this connections is bound for life infinity it comes back to you and him no matter where you go number eight you know it comes back to you and him huh. and they put the work on the healing eight this is putting the work on the healing so con con congratulations yeah that's all i can say this is what this full moon in Scorpio is about. It's achieving that healing. And um, it will bring the union that you're looking for. For both of you. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you so much. This was gorgeous. And uh, we will see you on our next video. Bye-bye.